happens to homeless people most of the time, especially in these area, uh, areas of being gentrified in these downtown areas, we've been criminalized, constantly criminalized. As Kat was talking about earlier, it's, it's against the law to exist for a homeless person, basically. They're, they're, you can't. Necessary functions of, for a human being, like sleeping, resting, lying down, and in some cities you can't feed homeless people, eating, those are life-sustaining activities that we exist by. And those are being taken from us. They're being criminalized. It's being made against the law for me to slip, slide. I mean, sit and sleep, share food. And so basically, my existence is being outlawed. It's being made illegal. And this is, this is, this is not right. This is criminal. But we continue to answer those challenges by organizing and fighting back and presenting and coming up with solutions. And homeless people have the solutions because that is impacting them the most. And they, they, they know what's best, not just for homeless people, but for people uh, overall. So they do not become victims of this situation. So, and I think it was asked earlier, if I was the mayor of the city of San Francisco, my first, po my main priority policies would be toward the, my most vulnerable populations in my city. My budget would reflect that, uh, the most vulnerable uh, segments of the population in my city. Homelessness, I would make policy that would create a, a situation where we can reserve a, a existing housing affordable housing and also construct more affordable housing. I would also, with that housing, I would offer supportive services for people who have challenges like alcohol and drugs. Uh, supportive services for those folks. I would also create uh, the apparatus where there'd be more funding for mental services for folks, right? I mean, under the Reagan administration, not just Reagan, but he's mainly known for this of uh, closing down mental services and health services and, and such like that, defunding those, where we have a large population of mentally challenged people on the street. And the answer to that is, is to lock them up, put them in jail and in prison, which is no place for mentally challenged people. But these models that are being used now to address inequality in our country that model is basically a decriminalization model, a law enforcement model, a policing model, and we're not going to police our way out of inequality. So this is really backward policy. So if I was the mayor, I would turn those type of policies around. I would invest more in jobs, uh, mental health, health services, affordable housing, before I would invest in law enforcement. Because law enforcement is not an answer to inequality. Law enforcement plays a part and perpetrating inequality and exacerbating already dire situation for homeless people. What do you guys feel about that? If you were the mayor, we'll be, yeah. We'll be. I think that uh, the Nazis aren't going to hurt us onto the trains without a fight. Mm -hmm. We know too much mm -hmm. and we're not going. Mm -hmm. That's our government. You know, they're not, they're doing it to us because we've handed over our power, mm -hmm. and we've got to take it back, and we can, and we should. Mm -hmm. We never should have given it up, but we did, and we, we're changing that. People are becoming aware that they can make changes. Mm -hmm. And it's hard because uh, a lot of people have been, uh, you know, disenfranchised from the system their entire lives, and it's hard to suddenly play by some of the system's rules that you have to do, such as voting. You know, there's a rejection of that because, you know, I'm not giving, you know, the system my vote. They're just going to, but we have to realize that that's how we take back the power. That's one, one way we begin to take back the power. And just like when the police do what, you know, the, uh, Black Lives Matter, which is something that just, it breaks my heart that that's a slogan because how could we even have to have that slogan? Mm -hmm. It just, it's, you know, every life matters, of mm -hmm. course. Mm -hmm. And that, but we live in a society where that's the fact, mm -hmm. but we can change it. 
it's not going to change overnight and I'm not going to get a house overnight, mm -hmm. but it'll happen. Mm -hmm. And we just have to have to be there and keep fighting the battles. Mm -hmm. And, you know, but the solution is housing. We don't mm -hmm. need to be better at being homeless. We need a house. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they could, they spend over the past 10 years, San Francisco spent $1.6 billion on homeless services. Now, granted, it employed a lot of people who aren't homeless as a result, but it didn't provide the solutions. It's a continuation of what were mm -hmm. meant to be temporary solutions, mm -hmm. and they aren't addressing the problem. Mm -hmm. They're just putting a Band-Aid on, right. on, uh, on it, and it's, we've got to, like you said, they need to listen to the homeless, because mm -hmm. people can't imagine what it's like. Right. They have no idea. I know I couldn't. Yeah. I thought I was this bleeding heart liberal, <laughs> you know, and thought I was so compassionate and all, but boy, I didn't have a clue, <laughs> you know, yeah. and I, I thank God I have come here and know mm -hmm. people and, you know, I feel like in some ways, I feel like my life before the TL was kind of in grays and now it's in color and it's... Mm. It's beautiful now. You know, I'm, I'm happier than I've ever been, even though I'm on the street and mm -hmm. challenged every day in ways that suck. <laughs> but. And you, Mayor Perez. Well, if I was mayor, I'd do the same thing, you know, <laughs> with you, you know. Um, get more housing for low income mm -hmm. and jobs and, um, and all, these, um, all these cuts that they're doing, mm -hmm. you know, and make, you know, mm -hmm. so.